But Jonathan, as you know so well, the markets are laser focused on the incoming Trump administration and what it will mean for business and the economy. Our politics reporter, Kevin Cirilli, is back with us now with a very special member of the Trump team. Kevin? Thanks, David. I'm joined now, of course, by Kellyanne Conway, a senior advisor and special counsel to the president-elect, Donald Trump. Thank you very much, Kellyanne, for being here. Thank you, Kevin. Hi, David. Let's get right into it. Lots to get through. Yesterday, of course, President-elect announcing how he will separate his incoming administration from the Trump Organization. Now, that put the issue to rest for most Republicans, but it has drawn criticism from Democrats. I want to play for you, Kellyanne, what Senator Elizabeth Warren told me yesterday and get your response. Take a listen. I'm more concerned now than ever because he's not moving where he needs to move. And that is, we need to have him divest. He needs to get rid of his business interests and he needs to put them in what's called a blind trust. Kellyanne, what do you make of that? That's typical rhetoric from Senator Elizabeth Warren, who's very hostile to the free market. As you know, Donald Trump is something she's never been, a job creator, a successful businessman who has significant assets and holdings across many continents and uh, great responsibilities really to his employees, to his children who uh, own, own part of the business or I assume will one day. And uh, what Donald Trump has done yesterday, and it was all announced transparent for the entire Bloomberg audience to see Kevin so they can pull up his attorney Sherry Dillon's full statement. What Donald Trump did yesterday is extraordinary by any measure. He basically said any deals already in the pipeline have been terminated, even if they were close to being completed or in negotiations, uh, that new deals will not be pursued. New foreign deals will not be pursued at all by his successors, his temporary successors, uh, Don Jr. and Eric, his sons. He also has already sold off things that are easily sellable, uh, things that are easy to liquidate, publicly held comment, you know, publicly held stock. Uh, but, you know, so as your viewers, your sophisticated viewers certainly know, selling real estate is not like selling a stock. And so with other assets, they will be put in the trust. Uh, that would be cash and some other holdings, for example. Um, he also made very clear that he will not have any type of say on anything that's going on with respect to the Trump Organization. No talk of the deals, no talk of the profits, no talk of personnel, et cetera. And this is just an extraordinary move um, because we just are not accustomed to this. We are accustomed to having presidents who are politicians, many of them professional politicians, who move from political job to political job to political job. There's no yeah. consideration in having to, to move around uh, billions of dollars in assets. But Kellyanne, I, you know, I, I want to ask you specifically about turning over the company to uh, Don Jr. as well as Eric, because you know how close the Trump family is. So is it realistic, I guess, to think that you can build a Chinese wall through this family uh, that is so close and that they won't talk about these business deals uh, in the Trump administration? How, how do you ease concerns of folks who are uneasy about that? Well, partisans will never be convinced because they'll always have their fake political concerns. We can't do anything about people who uh, just don't want to look at the truth and the facts. So we, that's, that's always going to exist. But Kevin, for those who want to see a transparent and open process, they, they need to look at the fact that Donald Trump is going to talk to his children, but not about business. I think Donald Trump put it best in an on-the-record interview back in November at the New York Times, where he said if it was up to some people, he would never talk to his children again. That's not going to happen. But what are they discussing? They won't be discussing the business and the business deals. And let's be very clear. Don Jr. and Eric have been respected, valued, wildly successful executives at the Trump Organization for a number of years already. This is not on-the-job training. This is not new for them. This is what they do every single day. They'll just be doing it at, I guess, without their father. They'll be doing it without their father yeah. there. Um, so I, I think people should... People should not be presumptively negative and skeptical and just give it a chance to really uh, sink in. It's an enormous sacrifice and for there's also the President-elect Trump. There's also this appointee to a, a uh, an ethics advisor yes. who will have to, to be overseeing all of those deals. And, and I want to I get a timeline on this. Are we going to have a name for that advisor before inauguration? Are there names that you can share with us? When will that be announced and, and laid out? 
I'm not in a position today to share the name of that ethics advisor, but it's so important to build independence and third-party stewardship within this new structure. And, and they've done that in terms of the ethics advisor. Um, and so that, that too should make people feel much more comfortable that you'll have an independent uh, person in there in addition to his sons, in addition to his employee of many years, Alan Weisselberg, who's you know a, a deeply respected, a long time, decades long, 40 some years employee of the Trump Organization. Uh, Kellyanne, uh, I want to talk about the economy a bit, because this was really at the center of Donald Trump's campaign for the presidency. And, and yesterday, he mentioned the fact that jobs were really his number one priority. At the same time, the markets are really waiting, after rising substantially after the election, waiting to hear what is that plan. They didn't get it yesterday. They're somewhat disappointed this morning. This must be high in your list to, to do. When will we be getting the details of that plan? It's very high on the list, David, and uh, Donald Trump has it as part of his 100-day plan. Anybody can pull that up and see it. The contours will be should be very much the same as that. Uh, so first of all, you already see the Trump effect. You see that manufacturing jobs are already coming back to the U.S. or staying here, I should say. Uh, plans to build factories in Mexico to ship jobs over the border there, take them away from hardworking Americans, uh, have stopped uh, in terms of a few very prominent employers in this country. That's the Trump effect. You see the stock market loves the fact that he was elected. We've had uh, record highs over a number of days. Uh, and so I think specifically, his job creation plan includes a number of things. He will, um, first of all, it's, it's just rolling back some of these corrosive regulations. We hear from business owners and aspiring business owners daily that it's the regulatory framework that is suffocating them. In addition, he has a very ambitious, very doable tax relief plan uh, he will create 25 million jobs over 10 years, and he will reduce taxes across the board. Middle class tax relief. Those who don't pay taxes will have relief as well. Also in there is energy investment. This is something that we just haven't had in the last eight years. We've been pretty hostile as a, as, as a nation to energy investment. You know, David and Kevin, we hear from people all the time. They complain that nothing's made in America anymore. Well, you know what's made in America? Our energy sources. It's under our feet and it's off our shores. And it's time that we have presidential leadership who will help develop it in a responsible and profitable way for all of us so that we have less dependence on foreign sources of oil and we can create jobs and stimulate the economy right here at home. So it's a multi-step plan, very much important. We hope that we can have what President George W. Bush had. By June of 2001, he had passed his tax relief package with the help of almost a dozen Democratic senators because they know their constituents like it. Right. Those are all terribly important issues. Let's just take one or two and be specific about it. Uh, for example, infrastructure spending. When will we know whether this will be a top priority and what the timing is on asking for infrastructure spending from the Congress? It is a top priority if you look overall at the first 100-day plan. And it is in his original first 100-day plan that was articulated in Gettysburg in about October 22nd. Uh, so people can pull that up and look at that. We also have to work with Congress. I mean, you see what happened in the Senate just last night, David and Kevin, before Mr. Trump is even sworn in. You have the Senate taking concrete steps towards repealing and replacing Obamacare. So those who have been hurt by the Unaffordable Care Act will have more affordable, accessible health care. Uh, they're complaining that their premiums are rising, their choices in quality are diminished. They certainly have um, an access problem, many Americans, and yet we're guaranteeing those who do have coverage will not be without coverage. So a big, big step last night, really in the dead of night, already by the Senate. Infrastructure, we've gotten some joyful noises about infrastructure from Democrats and Republicans alike, and Americans are really excited about this because we don't build anything in America anymore. And, and, and we all know that our roads, our bridges, our infrastructure is in desperate need of repair and renovation. This is a guy who builds things for a living, and so it, it's the right person to be stewarding and putting as a major priority in those first 100 days infrastructure. Kellyanne, one last specific. Uh, during the campaign, we heard that if elected president, which he now has been, Donald Trump would declare China a currency manipulator right from the beginning. Is that still the plan? When will we hear that announcement? 
Well, you could take Donald Trump at his word. If he has said that then, he, he means it now. When he becomes president, he will make clear what his positions and what his priorities are on specific events as they happen. Um, we're very respectful of one president at a time. I've even heard it on your network. So we can't have it both ways, David, that we have one president at a time, and yet we want Donald Trump to, uh, to pronounce presidential policies now. But I think that Donald Trump was elected for many reasons, but I would put in the top three to five the fact that people know he will keep his promises, that he means what he says and he says what he means. We already see it happening with plans to repeal and replace Obamacare, to certainly build that wall and have Mexico pay for it. And I think to your point, uh, to 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 you know be tougher on people around the globe that just have not really have not been called to account by this administration. Uh, and that would that would of course would include China. But Kellyanne, it's not just uh, foreign countries. I mean, yesterday in the press conference, we heard him talk about big pharma, and he said that they're, quote unquote, getting away with murder. Traditionally, though, it's been Republicans who have been a bit uneasy about uh, regulating the big pharma. So how is he going to be able to get Republicans and his own party on board? Are the days of, of, uh, of big pharma kind of getting away with this type of stuff over? And the markets seem to be reacting strongly to that. Do they have it right? Uh, or, or not. <laughs> so, Kevin, all of that will be unfolding in the next couple of weeks and months. I will tell you that to repeal or replace Obamacare and not have a conversation about drug pricing um, yeah. seems you know, not, not, not like a, a reasonable prospect <laughs> and not responsible prospect. Um, at the same time, I think the president-elect will bring along Republicans the, and hopefully Democrats the way he has even in these last couple of weeks, they wanted to they wanted to totally overhaul an ethics office, and he, he tweeted about it. They they changed their minds. He's talking about how important it is to repeal and replace Obamacare in private meetings and publicly. They're already taking steps to do that. He's talking about keeping manufacturing jobs here and our factories here since over 70,000 have already closed, and private industry is responding to that in a positive fashion. So I think you see the Trump effect on any number of issues already before he's sworn in. And I, I think that if you apply that to drug pricing, if we can talk to private industry, if he can bring along the public sector, meaning other Republicans in, in the House and Senate, other Democrats and independents if they like to come along. It's, it's a healthy conversation to have. We hear from people daily, as I'm sure journalists at Bloomberg do, that they feel crushed by, by the cost, just the cost of the drugs that they need. So we should at least have that conversation. Donald Trump's the right person to lead it. Kellyanne Conway, special counsel to President-elect Donald Trump and also a Philadelphia Eagles fan. We thank there you, you very much. <laughs> we thank you. Thanks, David. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah. Have a good one. Back okay. to you, David. Many thanks to Kevin Cirilli reporting for Washington for that plug for the Eagles, I must say. So coming up, commodity comeback. Oil extends its biggest gain in six weeks after Saudi Arabia said it would cut production by more than its targeted level. We speak with Bank of America's head of global commodities and derivatives research, Francisco Blanche, for his outlook. That's next, and this is Bloomberg.